Okay, I'm going to use this example to show you how to set up a simple interest table using the Excel spreadsheet program. Now, if you're using another spreadsheets program, such as Google Sheets, most of this should be exactly the same. Most spreadsheet programs use the same formula setup, the same cell setup. So here we're going to do a simple interest table with a principal of 3000, a rate of 5%, and we're going to run it through 15 periods. And once we have it set up correctly, we should be able to figure out how much money would be earned over 15 periods with these conditions. And we can also use it to answer a question such as what rate would we need if we wanted that final amount to actually be $6,000. So let's start by setting up our headings. We're going to need a uh, column for our periods. We're going to need our principal. We're going to need our rate, interest, and our final amount. The, way, the best way to set up periods is to take advantage of the copy and paste features in the spreadsheet program. So start with period one, I'm just going to type that in. And then for the second cell, I'm going to use a formula. So all formulas and spreadsheets have to start with an equal sign. We're going to take this cell, so I'm going to click on it and we're going to add one to it. And now I have period two. And I can copy and paste this down. Let's see if I guess correctly. There's my 15 periods. So by hitting, clicking here, control C, and then click and drag, and then control V, I can paste it down. Now you could just type in one, two, three, four, five, but this saves a little bit of time once you get some practice at doing it. Okay, let's go to our period, but before I do that, I'm going to set up something up here. Our period is an amount of money. So I'm going to right click at the top here, and I'm going to choose format cells, and I'm gonna change the setting from general to currency. Okay, and so now when I type in the principal, it'll take that 3000 and immediately turn it into $3,000 for me. Technically, this isn't necessary to do the math, but it does make your uh, sheets look a little nicer. All right, now because this is a simple interest table, this principal is going to remain the same all the way down. So one thing I could do is just copy and paste this, or I could type 3000 every time. I'm going to show you a trick. What I'm going to do in the second cell below the 3000 is I'm going to hit equals and just set it equal to this. So now it's the same. And now I'm going to copy and paste. Now the reason I did this is you may run into a situation where you need to be able to easily change the principal and see it change all the way down. Because of the way I've set this up, I can change that principal say to 5000 and it'll do it for all the cells below. So it's a handy trick to understand in spreadsheets. Let's do the rate. And again, before I do the rate, the rate, if I wanted to do this normally, the way I'm used to is I would need to, by hand, divide that by 100 to change that percentage into a decimal. And then the math would work. Or I can go to the top here and again, format my cells and choose percentage. By setting the cells to be percentage, I don't need to worry about the dividing by 100. The spreadsheet will do it for me. I can just take whatever rate I see and type it in. And now any math that gets done with this will automatically multiply by 0 0.05 rather than five. So handy little setting to set that to percentage. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for our rate because it's not going to change. So set that equal to H11 and control C, click and drag, control V. Now I have it set up. So if I change this rate, say to 4%, changes all of them below for me. So Let's put that to five, we're good to go. Okay, now interest is the first time I actually have to do a calculation. So I've just got over here, this is the general simple interest formula you should be used to at this point. The interest is the principal multiplied by the rate multiplied by the time. However, when you're working in a spreadsheet, you're going to recalculate the interest for each row of the table. That means that every single time, the time is always one period. So what all you really need to do is interest equals principal. So I'm going to click on the cell which has my principal in it for that row. And I'm going to multiply, by the way, multiply is shift eight by the rate. So G11 times H11, this cell times this cell, there's my interest for a single period. And I don't need to worry about time. Time is always one when you're working in a spreadsheet and setting up a table such as this. However, I do want to do the same thing I did before. This time, actually, I'm just going to copy and paste this all the way down. And I will point out something interesting here. Once you set it up, you see it stays the same. But if I look closely when I click on each cell, the values of the formula change. 
And that's the way spreadsheets work when you use copy and paste, is any formula for this cell that uses cells in this row, when you go to the one below, it uses the cells below, right? Each time, if you're watching closely up here, it's changing for me. It's one of the, the beauties of using spreadsheets in doing multiple calculations for you. Okay, I'm almost done. We need our amount. So we do need to know the formula for amount, which I hadn't typed in. Amount is always principal plus interest. That applies no matter what you're doing in any, whether you're using formulas or spreadsheets, the final amount of money you have is always your principal plus your interest. However, it's going to be different for each row. So let's start. In the first period, it'll be whatever amount you invest to begin with, plus the interest that you're earning. There's our final amount of money at the end of period one. Period two is different, however. I can't just add the principal and the interest anymore because I want a running tally of how much I, money I have in the bank at the end of each period. So instead of adding the principal, I'm going to add the previous year's amount plus the, the interest I'm earning. Now, this interest is the same each time, but that's the simplest way to do it. And once I have this, so this formula is actually different from the second cell and you've got to set them up separately. But once you have the second cell set up, all the rest after that are the same. So I can copy, drag, paste. And now if you look down here at the bottom at the 15th cell, once you've set all this up, this is the amount of money that you would have in the bank under these conditions after 15 periods of time have passed. Okay, so we've set up our table. We've used it to determine the final amount of money earned. Now let's look at this last question. What rate would be required of a final balance of $6,000? Or in other words, how do you double your money in 15 years? Well, because I've set this up, I can just go back to my first initial rate, which was the only one where I actually typed in a value, and I can try a higher rate. Now, why, why do I think it's going to be a higher rate? Well, I only earned $52.50 with 5%, and I need to get $6,000. let us try 6%. Notice whole bunch of things changed. All this, these be, all became sixes because I had set up the formulas and used copy and paste and the amounts all changed and the interest all changed. The spreadsheet does it all for you. This gets to $5,700. Not quite enough. Let's try 7%. A little too much. Okay, so you should be watching this number. It's a little higher. So I need something between six and seven. I'm going to cheat because I know the answer. 6.67. If you were doing this on a question, you just kind of use trial and error back and forth until you get to the answer. You need $6,000, That's as close as you're going to get. If I did 6.68, I'm still even higher. If I go 6.66, not enough. So 6.67 is the best answer to that question. So there you go. There, hopefully I have covered a lot of questions about how to set up formulas in spreadsheets and how to set up a, a table and how to use it to answer questions.